Good evening, everyone. Happy Monday. I hope you guys are doing well today. Looks like we already have a little bit of a group. Um, just before anything, uh, the last couple videos or two with 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 my streams and then also uh, with Catholic Bible Geek, um, we had some roboting happening uh, with the playback. So I might just ask you guys just to maybe pay closer attention to the quality. And if I am you know, rough on the video, or if, uh, if, if I sound like a robot, just let me know. Uh, but it should be a pretty fun topic today. I think I'll have fun. I think hopefully you guys enjoy it. So first question, of course, is audio fine? Do I sound loud and clear? Um, and I'm actually going to go ahead and mute myself on YouTube. There we go. Okay. So, uh, big Al says, uh, oh man, Okay, comments are kind of slow on StreamYard. Let me see. I did see that Big Al confirms that uh, looks good, sounds good. So that's good. So just I'll, I'll probably keep my eyes on the chat a little bit more uh, this evening to see how things are doing. So before we get started, let's go ahead and welcome everyone. We first have our, or my dear professor, Ready for your wisdom, my son of river? Well, thank you, my love. And then we have Big Al, our friend. Have a great stream. Thank you, Big Al. We've got Jigwat. Welcome tonight. Uh, can there be ever be another John Williams? And I think you asked that same question because uh, uh, I have been talking about John Williams off and on. Um, and 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 the, of course the answer is no. Uh, but there's there's a reason why I I titled the the video like that because uh well, well we'll get into some very short articles some some short interviews on on this uh composer natalie holt and and, and who she is and what she hopes to do with Ken the kenobi series and and what her background is so that's kind of why i titled it it has it has a little bit to do with john williams today as well go team ghost planet is wishing everyone hi and uh, ace is here but he he's 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 talking about some some drugs, so I'm not going to post that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so he's in the past, present, and future all at once. So, which means he's not on the stream right now, but he will probably catch the replay. So, welcome to the replay when you start watching, and to all of you else, you know, if you guys are watching on uh, at a later time. Uh, and then we have, I think, oh yeah, Ace um, mentioned, and then Final Fantasy. Welcome, nice to see you. And Dr. Y also, nice to see you too. The sound is engraving perfectly. Well, that's terrific. That's wonderful. Um, ever since I, I stopped streaming with my headphones, I, I just don't really have any per perspective or, or perception of, of, of my aural hearing. Because when you have when you have your headphones speaking into the microphone, you, you can actually hear just a little bit more, uh, like a kind of a wall, a resonant wall <clears throat> of your voice kind of delaying at your ears. So since I don't have that, I, I have to trust you guys and all of that good stuff. So um, let's get started. Uh, I wanted to talk about the news. When, when it comes to music, you know, I, 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 I've been kind of, um, what's the word, vacillating or oscillating, whatever the case is. <laughs> I'm so bad with my vocabulary when it comes to streaming live. Um, but I've been going back and forth saying, well, I don't really want to talk about Star Wars, you know, because I'm not a fan of what's happening, you know, how how Star Wars is being handled and managed, um, you know, with Disney. Uh, but at the, on the other hand, I, I do want to talk about music related news concerning Star Wars, because, you know, things like, you know, streaming and Disney Plus with with their upcoming shows. I think this is really at least for the next decade, I, I would give it. The next five to eight to ten years, I would say this is this is the manner of our entertainment going forward, and that includes music as well. And you know, if if you've been on my other streams and um, have heard me talk about music, whether that has to do with John Williams with Star Wars and and other films, or if that has to do with Hans Zimmer and his approach and his composition methods, you. Um, you probably will hear much of the same thing tonight, maybe with a little bit of a perspective because we're talking about a new person, um, a relatively new composer in her career, and that is Natalie Holt. Um, so it should be some new insight to all of this, you know, how 
how entertainment, how modern entertainment is approaching music going forward. So I think it'll be fun. Um, I, I, I like talking about this, you know, talking about uh, soundtracks or musical approaches to different things. So we will go ahead and get started. And all you guys are confirming. Yes, you look stunning and sound loud and clear. That's good. You had a good class, apparently, you know, earlier before the stream. So you sound a lot of clear, too. So that is good. That is good. Uh, oh, we uh, we we both shared your live stream with the Fanman Home Office. That's cool. Awesome. Good, good, good. All right. Yeah, well, I, I think I think Big Al is kind of liking this. <laughs> You just can't help yourself. The lure of Star Wars is strong, young Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think we'll take it away. This is a total impromptu, just with some very short, I'm going to go over probably three articles, very short articles slash interviews. I think actually one is a blog post. I'm not sure, but I'm going to go ahead and share three short sources and, and talk about what is going on. But before I do, let's actually get straight into the, the Star Wars news and, and what is coming up um, with the Kenobi series. So a couple of things. So it has been recently announced that Natalie Holt will be putting music to the Kenobi series. You know, she will be uh, working on the score or well, actually it's airing next month. So she's been at the score, you know, she's been composing and she's no doubt probably been um, in the, the sound production and maybe not sound effects, but the post-production with the recording, whether it's orchestra music or electronic music, whatever the case is. So pretty soon the world will hear the soundtrack that she has provided for for this Kenobi series. And so, um, again, I'm not going to be watching the show. I have no interest in watching the show, um, but it would be interesting to to hear, again, what is going on with with her treatment her musical treatment of the star wars universe and i might make some predictions i don't know i, I have some takes some ideas some predictions on on what her music is going to sound like and and we've got about five weeks left so i think it would be a, a good time you know tonight uh this week in in april uh to guess you know how she is going to put this uh uh in place, you know, how she's going to compose music for this series. So she is um, taking on the mantle as a composer for this Disney Star Wars series. Now, recent news also uh, is that I believe John Williams approached Lucasfilm, and I think he approached Kathleen Kennedy um, uh, directly to ask to do the theme of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, and it's very weird. You'll, you'll see this in the articles. Um, either him or or another person that, that's that's heard him say this, maybe Natalie Holt herself. Uh, I've been hearing different people say that uh, this is the legacy character that John Williams never had a theme for, never composed a theme for. Now, here here is my here's my frame of mind regarding Obi-Wan and a theme for Obi-Wan. I do, I'm, I'm probably among a lot of people, I'm, I'm probably in a camp. Uh, I actually do think that John Williams did compose a theme for Obi-Wan. Now, we all understand it to be, uh, as uh, we all know it to be the Force theme. You know, that famous, probably the most famous, outside of Luke Skywalker's theme or the Imperial March, um, pretty much the Force theme is the most iconic, it's that focal point of all the music of Star Wars. We all know it. We can we can we can hum it right away, and and even if you just look up Force Theme on YouTube or Spotify or whatever the case is, uh, you'll 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 hear it instantaneously. And and again, it's ubiquitous. U ubiquitous. It's everywhere. We like when when I mean everywhere, it's pretty much anywhere across the globe. A person would be able to pick, you know, if they, if they have access to internet or if they have um, some, some good memory, if they've seen Star Wars in the past, they, they know what that theme sounds like. We all know it. So that's, that's, that's an aside, um, a little bit of a, a rant there, but, uh, but I do actually believe that the force theme is Obi-Wan's theme. 
for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first one is a little bit more subjective, and that is my first encounter with Obi-Wan Obi was with that theme. I mean, we all share that experience uh, to some degree where it's first introduced with Obi-Wan, you know, in, in A New Hope or, or the first Star Wars film. That's how we know th this mysterious hermit. Who, who is this man? You know, who ha he he's he bears some significance of some significant past. And and Williams portrayed that wonderfully in, in that first encounter, that first meeting with Luke Skywalker and, and, and Obi-Wan himself. So I actually have I'm of the mind that the force theme actually is synonymous with Obi-Wan. Now, of course, with all this new entertainment, with all these new shows, with all the, the, the films following the original trilogy, obviously, it, the Force theme had extended to the Force itself, to this mystical Force uh, that, you know, it places that 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 keeps the Star Wars the Star Wars universe intact. So I understand that not everyone's going to agree with me there, but it's just so strong with Obi Wan's character that it just it it just works. So that's that's my point of view. But of course, people can have different uh, points of view or point of views, whatever the the plural for that is. Uh, so you know, go ahead and say on on the chat what. What, what you think. But uh, in any case, the recent news is that John Williams approached Lucasfilm wanting to do the theme for Obi-Wan Kenobi. And 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 they they're they're letting him. I mean, that would be a really dumb publicity move <laughs> if if they declined. They they of course they wouldn't. Uh they they couldn't they they wouldn't dare. <laughs> uh so that that that's gonna be the case where John Williams will be composing a theme for that show. And I think this is his first uh, music with Star Wars um, going forward with the television series. So it's 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 monumental to a lot of people. It's 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 fantastic to a lot of people. Um, I I certainly hope uh, that Mr. Williams, Sir Williams, I should say, uh, I, I hope he takes from the Force theme and and works it in Obi Wan. Um, as a character, because it's just, it's so seminal and it's so significant, significant to that character. But as far as the score itself, he's only, to my knowledge, he's only doing the theme for Obi-Wan's character, you know, the character of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, Natalie Holt will probably be doing all episodes, and I think there are six of them in total. So, so that's a bit of news. Now, on Natalie Holt herself, I, I was listening to her music and whatever I have to say as far as input and some perspective, uh, hopefully some insight, whatever I have to say about her as a person or her as a professional composer um, is like, I, I don't want it to be um, in any way a, a sound, sound like it's coming from a place of criticism because she is a very capable composer. She's a very good composer. She composes music very well. She's very good at emotional cues. I have no idea. You know, I was, I was listening to a handful of her soundtracks for different television shows or, or films. Um, and I have no idea what these stories are about. But listening to the music, she she knows how to work in emotion. I can hear it. I'm like, that's objectively very good for a film and television composer. So she is very much capable of uh, producing emotional cues, uh, some transitions, some musical transitions between scenes. Uh, she's also very good with atmosphere. She 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 knows how to work with maybe an atmosphere for like a, a medieval or Renaissance setting. Uh, or like a like a you know a, a time of knights and kingship and 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 all of that to something fantastical like like it had been with Loki you know the television series that that centers around that character the recent Marvel television series she she was the composer for Loki so I think she is very very capable. Now, I will say my first track that I had heard of hers, I was not impressed at all. Um, and that is her most popular track so far. Thus far, people know her from Loki. And I heard Loki's theme. And 
I don't really care about the emotional impact. It's not good composition. In fact, actually on the Spotify version, the production is really poor quality. But even, even disregarding production, uh, her theme for Loki is not well composed. Um, I, I'm not going to say it's bad, but it's very much an amateur approach to composing music. And, I, and I've talked about this before, where you have a statement and then you have little embellishments. Then you have another statement and then you have little embellishments and then you have a, you know, a repeat of that. And, and it's kind of, it's, it's like, like um, it's, it's, it's two things to, to consider. It's like block. This is block. Like this is a red block. Then this is a blue block. Then this is a green block or stacked up like red, blue, green, like things are stacked up and vertical. There, there's no intricacy. There's no voice leading. There's no real good musical texture in, in that theme. It's, it, it's music that I wouldn't even expect a composer to write for a, a game produced in 1991. It's, it's that amateur in quality. Now, does that mark her as an amateur composer? Absolutely not. Her other soundtracks are very uh, good in quality. I wouldn't say they're completely excellent, but they are objectively good as far as music goes. So I just wanted to, to put that at the front of the stream, that if, if I am coming from a place of speculation or even, even have a, a, an objective critique on what is so or what may be so, I want to come at, with, with a, 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 from a place of grace that she is a good composer. I have no doubt she can actually compose a very good score for this television series, but I do have things to speculate. So that is, I think what it, that's, that's what I wanted to say up front. And I think without further ado, we'll just go ahead and pull up these argument, uh, not arguments, these articles. <laughs> I'll be making some arguments. So one second here. Oh, and let's actually mention these uh, uh, comments. So, so Jigwat says, I agree that Obi-Wan already has a theme. And, and I think John Williams, his words were a little funny. He, he said, this is the only legacy character I don't have a theme for. So obviously he has one for Luke Skywalker, Yoda, Darth Vader with the Imperial March. I, I know that's more the Empire, but it's really Darth Vader's theme. Now, with Anakin, there's no Anakin theme. There's a love theme between Anakin and Padme. And uh, I'm kind of blanking on a lot of themes right now. Uh, but but I don't think, if that's the case, if, if, if John Williams said that this is the only le legacy character I didn't write for, thinking also uh, Leia, Luke and Leia, and Han and Leia, you know, their love theme. But... No, I think I I, th I think if that that were the case, there are, are a lot of characters that uh, that he may have missed. He has one for Emperor, the, the Emperor. Uh, he has one for I think he has one for Count Dooku. I'm not sure. Um, but I don't. I, he, again, I, I think the Force theme is Obi -Wan, Obi Wan's theme initially, at least. Okay, so um, just double checking, guys. Uh, Go Team Ghost Planet says you're buffering. So. Please confirm that I sound okay, because I, I I really would like to talk about this. Um, but if I'm rob roboting too much, I definitely would um, have to do this as a separate video. And I have my phone next to me, Prof. If you want to <laughs> message me too. All right. And um, Final Fantasy uh, Twelve says the Force theme is probably a strong theme for the Jedi in general, which I do agree. Okay, good. Confirmed by two people. Okay, we'll take it as that. Yep. Anakin had, had a theme. He had a theme in episode one. Okay, interesting. I, I can't think about it um, off the top of my head. All right. So, um, yeah, let's get into these, these topics and then we'll go back to chat. Uh, they will... These will, again, be pretty short. Uh, let's go ahead. And by the way, I might not even just talk about the news on Natalie Holt composing for the Kenobi series. I'm probably going to be talking about how the news is talking about it. I, I want to do some news commentary. <laughs> Thanks, Go Team Ghost. 
I do appreciate that. All right, so let's share some, let's share a one article. Is this the one I want? Well, let me let me double check if that's the one I want. Uh, no, I want this one first. Yeah, that's the one I want first. So let's see if you can see that. Yeah, that looks good. Looks good to me. Uh, looks good to you guys. All right, Sir Stone, welcome. We are talking about Natalie Holt composing for the uh, Obi Wan series, so or Kenobi series. Let us. Uh, I actually need to. There we go. So let me go ahead and uh, scroll down. Hopefully you can see that. All good. All good. Good. <laughs> All right. So let's get started again. These are nice and short. Natalie Holt to score Obi Wan Kenobi, becoming the first woman composer in Star Wars history. First of all, I want to say a couple of things. The first thing is I'm so tired of looking at this picture of, of Obi-Wan using these advanced, you know, binoculars to check on Luke. I, I They need a different picture. I'm, it's such a meme now and it, they need more pictures. So that, that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is the title of, of this article. Uh, Natalie Holt to score Obi-Wan Kenobi, becoming first woman in for the first woman composer in Star Wars history because there were 6,000 composers for the history of Star Wars before a woman showed up. No, actually there were six. I think there were six or seven composers before a woman did that. I uh, So I, this might be just a little bit of a rant. Again, this is not a political channel, but I just got to say that um, that's really not a big deal. Like, Becoming the first woman. Okay, I will applaud when the first woman walks on the moon or walks on Mars. That that will be cool. That will be iconic. Uh, and if if she's a good presidential candidate, I will applaud such a time in history as that. But this, there were only six or seven men who have composed for Star Wars. It's not a big deal. It's it's like you you walk into a room, but but six or seven people walk before you and then you walk into that room and then people are starting to applaud. Oh my gosh, you're the first, you're, you're the first woman to do this. Like, this is, this is not, this is a, this is a nothing title. I, and I hate to be so assertive that uh, assertive um, of that, but it's, it's just really, they're making a big thing out of nothing. If she's capable, she's a composer who could compose for star Wars and that's it. It's th there doesn't need in star Wars history. Yeah. Six, six or seven people have composed for Star Wars, not 6,000. <laughs> you know, maybe if she was the first woman composer ever to premiere a piece of music, that might be worth noting. Um, but this this idea that this is so I this is so monumental a time for the first woman to compose for Star Wars is like big deal. It's like you've got men, you've got women, you've got two kinds of people in the population. And it's not a big deal. So I'm going to. Leave, leave my rant. Hopefully I didn't offend anyone and people like trying to leave my stream after that, but no, just, it's not a big deal. And I, I wish people would stop saying first ever, 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 because it's not the first ever. <laughs> and if it is, it's not a big deal. So that aside, let's go ahead and continue. New information has been released regarding the music for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series that is headed to Disney Plus next month. It was already reported that the main theme for the series is being created and composed by John Williams, who wrote the music for the Star Wars films, as well as so many other famous musical scores like Jaws, Superman, Indiana Jones, E.T., Home Alone, Hook, Jurassic Park, Schindler's List, Harry Potter, and countless others. They're the main ones. <laughs> uh, this seems like a no-brainer, but it's kind of momentous, you know, as Obi-Wan Kenobi will be William's first Star Wars television project. And, and that's cool. I mean, that, that's, that's great. Um, so I'm glad he's able to do that. And speaking of momentous, the Obi-Wan Kenobi series also welcomes Natalie Holt, the first woman composer, the first of seven people. I think actually she's the seventh person. I think it's six people before her. 
the first woman composer to work on a live action Star Wars project. She will be com she will be composing the score for the rest of the series. Holt has worked on several prolific projects in the past, including Disney Plus Marvel series Loki, as well as the upcoming DC movie Batgirl. I'm sure I'm sure you might have some thoughts on that. <laughs> Holt said that Williams' past work on Star Wars was. Um, let me say this again. Holt said that Williams' past work on Star Wars will serve as tent poles for her own, and she will be bringing a new and fresh interpretation of Star Wars music to the series. She explained, it's been glorious working with my hero and also bringing my own voice to the show. Now, I mean, that that's cool, you know, to, to be able to collaborate with your hero, you know, your musical hero. That, that's a great thing, and I, and I would not want to take any... Thing away from her you know with that that that's a wonderful privilege to to have and you know who would who wouldn't want to have that privilege so i think that's great i did want to touch on um a couple of things with that paragraph so one point i think is really important she says that his music william's music will serve as tent poles for her own and that's that's really important. I think this would be the first time. Well, I want to be careful. I think you know the score for something like Rogue One worked. It, it did kind of have that Williams signature, at least the Williams sound, the John Williams sound. Um, but really, with the television series, they said they were inspired by John Williams, but their music did not show it. Their music showed a lot of Hans Zimmer. Now it's nothing wrong with with wanting to sound like Hans Zimmer but not for a Star Wars project you gotta you gotta go to the, the main thing that you know the impetus that made this whole universe so popular and beloved for for decades so the fact that she is going back to John Williams as inspiration is a very very good sign that this could be good music And uh, so that's that's wonderful. Now, the next thing makes me nervous. So the first thing made me happy <laughs> that, that she's looking to Williams for inspiration. But the next thing is she will be bringing a new and fresh interpretation of Star Wars music. Well, that's a little, I would say nebulous or ambiguous um, because... Ludwig Göransson did that with The Mandalorian. It was it was a new and fresh take on the Star Wars universe, musically speaking. And it was very much a, a breach from the traditional Star Wars sound. And so I really hope that if she's thinking new and fresh, that it's still, you know, that, that the William Signature sound is pretty much the the impetus propelling her to move forward. Now, what, what will that look like? Well, she's worked with both the orchestra and electronic synths. So if she is including synths, which, which she says she is, um, either in this article or, or in the next one or next couple, uh, okay, fine. You can actually make electronic music still sound like Star Wars, like, like the original Williams sound. But if she's going to be approaching it like someone like Gerenson, then, then that will be predictable. I, I've predicted that that's the the Star Wars music going forward. I'm I'm a little bit dubious, or or I would say this is a little bit um, uh, of uh, a nebulous thing. Um, so anyway, so I'm glad she's turning to John Williams for inspiration. Uh, the new and fresh interpretation. Uh, I, I will speculate. <laughs> <clears throat> Holt also shared that Williams' theme for the series is reflective and just entirely appropriate for the series. She added, it distills what the show is about in just the perfect way that John Williams can. It's wistful, but there's an element of hope to it. It's doing something new, and I think people are going to be really blown away by it. Now, good. I'm, I'm glad that she's describing this theme that John Williams has for Obi-Wan and for the series. I'm I'm glad there's that element of hope. Obi-Wan is is the embodiment of hope. He he is the human 
figure, that, that human embodiment of hope in, in the story, you know, to continue Anakin's legacy going forward. So we all know that about that character. And I'm glad John Williams is, is approaching it that way. Um, just kind of an aside, I, I know she's doing an interview and, and most people talk like this, but I really don't care for this isn't a, a critique against her as a person or a professional, but just in general with language. You know, she says it's doing something new, and I think people are really going to be blown away by it. I <clears throat> I don't really care for when people use that kind of language where, where they where they say, oh, and be prepared to be blown away. Like even if I had absolute I, I was a hundred percent sure that you would love my next track. Like, oh my goodness, people I know are going to love this. I wouldn't actually say that publicly. I would say something like, I really love this. This has been a, a seminal moment for me in my music composition career. I hope you enjoy it. But I'm only going that far with that expectation that I hope people would enjoy it. I would never want to have that presumption like, oh, you're going to be so blown away by this. It's like, People, by and large, don't have that kind of expectation for, for music. Now, that's not to say they won't be blown away by it, but, you know, putting that seed, like, oh, people are definitely going to react this way. It's, I wouldn't say it's insincere, but I think people need to be a little bit more careful when, when, when saying that, especially as a creative, like, oh, my, my novel is so good. My story is so good. You're going to love the characters. It's like, maybe, maybe, but. Maybe they don't, you know, it's, it's good that you like those characters, but, you know, don't expect the reader to be absolutely fascinated with, with your characters. So anyway, just that was a side. And it concludes, it will be fun to hear what the score for Obi-Wan Kenobi ends up sounding like. So please check out the, the series. I'm not, but I will also see um, what the music will sound like. Um, Actually, I won't listen to the music until it's released on Spotify. So there you go. All right, that was, was that really called Geek Tyrant? I think that was the, the blog post. All right, so good. Uh, I think, yeah, we'll go through some, some comments and then do the next short article. <clears throat> And I would say, yes, uh, Go Team Ghost, the EU Obi-Wan is far superior to Disney Star Wars canon, uh, or Star Wars non-canon version. <laughs> I mean, that, that uh, what was his name? John Jackson Miller book? Kenobi, that was, that was true to the character. It was, it was great. It was good. I mean, it's, I mean, as far as characters, like the the other characters, yeah, I mean, had you had to have some adventure and, and some interesting tension uh, to be on Tatooine for, you know, as a hermit. So I, as far as Kenobi stories would go, that would probably be the best one. I, you make a good point. You make a good point, but I think this is talking about television and movies. I wonder if this claim includes the dozens and dozens of Star Wars video games. I'm not sure. I, I'll 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 look I'll look at that. Um, but I, again, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I think people just generally make when you're talking about the the cultural climate that we're in. Like, if you are the first of anything other than the what's been the status quo you know because because people still and i don't get this it's a little bit of a rant but people still believe music composition is predominantly male now i i will say this carefully because most like the composers i listen to the artists i listen to are are all men i i think i maybe one time listened to this uh uh french uh french composer among the group uh, who is female, but you know, like, it's like, oh no, like 70% of composers are men. That's, that's terrible. <laughs> so because of that, because it's like, if, if it, it's not, it's the, the numbers aren't equal. The, the numbers will never be equal, whatever. But, but the thing is like that, that that's pushing the culture. You know, that's pushing our society to, to say, okay, if, if, if it's only like 
you know, 15%, you know, women composers. That means even if only one composer before her wrote for this franchise, we have to make sure if she composes, she has to be known as the first composer to, to win this award or to, to compose for this franchise. Um, so as far as film is concerned, as far as um, television is concerned with Star Wars, it's only been six or seven people. So it's, it's not a big deal. A uh, Final Fantasy fan says, the first woman to compose the music for Star Wars. That's probably their marketing ploy. Uh, why am I not surprised that everything in mainstream media makes um, uh, uh, makes big deals out of nothing? Yeah, exactly. And Dr. Y, actually, I don't know. Uh, how many times has Disney products claimed to have the first in things I've lost track? I don't know. I haven't really been keep, keeping up myself. Um, oh, and actually, I think well, we'll get back to this, the, the off topics uh, a little bit later. Remind me, remind me of your off topic questions, uh, Dr. Y, because, uh, the, the, yeah, I might want to talk about the, the, the Twitter news <laughs> if I had time. Um, let's see. And, and then Final Fantasy fan makes a really good point. People will just cleave onto one little thing and become obsessed with it. Like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. Don't be like Gollum. Um, it will blow you away is a pretty egotistical thing to say about something you've created. And I think she was talking about the John Williams theme, but regardless, it's like that don't, don't make, don't have that um, presumptuous nature in your language. And, and I'm not faulting her. It's it's an easy, okay, it is an easy thing to say if you're excited and you're in an interview speaking about your project. Um, and, and again, it's it's a consumer culture, as, as you guys have pointed out. So like you kind of want to up the ante about your emotions, like this is great, this is terrific and stuff. So I get it, I get it. But, you know, for people like you and me, you know, who are not on major projects, it would probably behoove you to, to say, hey, I'm really excited about this project, but I hope you enjoy it and, and see what you think. Okay, then Jigawatt confirms, it is a bad idea to overhype things. <laughs> yeah, and I agree. Uh, uh, the Hollywood's claim to the first is basically participation awards at this point. And then one more comment before we move on, move on to the next article. Uh, Donsa says, I like your attitude about um, blowing people away with your art. It's nice to be sincere with what you feel about it, but saying people will love it is putting too much happiness in the opinions of others. And well, it, and actually it also does um, a detrimental thing to your art. If you're actually saying something like that, as well-meaning as, as it could be, you actually might be putting on expectations. Like I was... I was expecting this story to be great and I didn't end up liking it. It wasn't bad, but I didn't end up liking it or, or the same with music. Um, so yeah, I, I would say like, as far as language is concerned, just be when you're marketing your art, just, just be as sincere as you can. I mean, don't lose your excitement for it. Like if, if you are excited about a project you're working on, yeah, show your excitement, but the proof will be in the pudding. I, I've said it before. My more popular tracks are the ones I don't care for, and my least popular tracks are the ones I like the most. That's that's just how it is, you know. Anyway, let's move on to the next uh, uh, article. And here we go. I think this is the right one. I bookmarked it, so... All right, double checking. Yeah, that looks sort of great. <laughs> the future of the force, the future of pop culture writing. I think this is a blog and I think this is the right source. If it's not, if it's something totally off topic, I'll take it down. <laughs> nope, it's, it's the right one. Natalie Holt joins the Star Wars family as the composer of Obi-Wan Kenobi. I think it's called the Kenobi series. But this was written April 24, so yesterday. <laughs> A four-minute read, it says. Okay. <laughs> and she looks great. She looks happy. 
Um, after turning in a wonderful score for Marvel's Loki, Natalie Holt has officially signed on to the score of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Well, Loki was not great. I mean, the the scenes, the, the other music outside his theme, that, that all was fine. But his theme was not, not well composed. Sorry, sorry, Natalie Holt. This is the one that's actually just... That's one of many tracks that, that that I thought. Oh, well, no, no. That's only one track that fell short, in my opinion, among her many good tracks. C continuing, uh, moving on. Uh, we've known for some time that John Williams would be writing the main theme for the Obi-Wan Kenobi Disney Plus series. But until now, the identity of the main series composer has remained a mystery. But thankfully, all that is about to change because Lucasfilm has confirmed that Natalie Holt will be scoring... The hotly anticipated series. And yes, I would agree that it is hotly anticipated. Natalie Holt. Uh, Holt rose to prominence in 2021 after turning in a wonderful score for the Marvel series or Mar Marvel Studios, Loki. But this represents her first foray into the galaxy far, far away and her first collaboration with the legendary John Williams. However, it is worth noting that the last time Williams collaborated with another artist on Solo, the payoff was nothing short of masterful. Never saw Solo. I don't even know what the score sounds like. On that project, it was John Powell who stepped in to deliver a sensational score built around Williams' tone-setting theme. Again, this, as far as musically speaking, I'm not talking about Disney's treatment of Star Wars, but as far as music is concerned, this kind of gives me hope that okay, this is this is William's signature that they they are focused on. So that's good. That's a great picture of her though. She 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 does look like a lovely, happy woman, and uh, just really uh, set in her ways and in her profession. So I am happy for her there. I'm just a little. I'm I, let's just say I'm interested in what she has to do with this score. Vanity Fair. With word finally reaching the wires about her appointment, the composer recently sat down with Vanity Fair to discuss the project. And in a very open and honest interview, Holt opened up about her approach to the score and touched upon working with John Williams. <laughs> these, these clauses are actually sentences. They're, these are not phrases. It's just one clause, period. Another clause, period. I'm sure that grinds the profs and Big Al's gears, who, uh, uh, John Williams, who incidentally requested the opportunity to write a theme for the only legacy character he hadn't done. I just don't find that believable, but moving on. Check out some snippets from the interview below. And this isn't a big interview. Uh, this is just a, you know, as they say, snippets. Let me see if, I don't know if you can see uh, this, so I will read carefully. Vanity Fair, what can you tell me about your approach? How did you begin developing the music on this show? Natalie Holt. Well, I think I've always just been a big, huge Star Wars fan. I watched the original trilogy with my dad when I was five years old. So the music from John Williams basically narrated my childhood. E.T., Raiders, Jurassic Park. So yeah, my starting point was just being a huge fan of the music for the show already. I'm a violinist and I come from an orchestral background. So I've been able to do something on an epic scale with these big forces. So um, uh, this, is, this is kind of you know, again, I'll use the word hopeful, where she has been positively impacted by John Williams, as as most of us have. But even better, she is a classically trained violinist. In fact, some of the scores that I had, uh, some of the soundtracks, rather, I had heard of hers today, uh, had some beautiful violin solos, some very capable musicianship with these solos. And I don't know if it was she herself who recorded... Um, if she recorded herself playing violin, uh, if that was her on violin, she is a master. She She's very, very much that, that professional. But even if it wasn't her, she knows how to compose a very convincing, very beautiful violin solo um, to, to be played by a master. So I have no doubt that she has some very good sensibilities when it comes to strings and pretty much all the, the family of uh, brasses. Um, Orchestras. I got a message. One second.
Okay, <laughs> I got a message from my prof saying you're fine, but the buffering's on the other end of, of, of other people. <laughs> I just had to make sure that I was fine. But at least you can see these still images if, if only my video is buffering. Look at those beautiful Book of Boba Fett posters, guys. That's great. <laughs> Over here on the right. Um, so anyway, going back to Natalie Holt. So she is classically trained as a violinist. Um, I think she plays piano as well. So I like that she has these musical sensibilities, that she's not this... Uh, you know, not not digging at Gerenson, but he he's a guitarist, but he he it's obvious he plays multiple instruments by by ear and has been self-taught. Well, okay, I don't want to say by ear, but it, it is obvious that he ha has been self-taught. If I, if I'm wrong, if someone on the internet says no, no, that's not true. He's been he's been trained too. I, I stand corrected, but I think he has been self-taught. There's nothing wrong with being self-taught, by the way. One of my favorite electronic composers living out there is a self-taught musician, electronic musician. So I'm not saying that, but I will also say that you can hear, you can hear in musical pieces and composition. I think a lot of people, not just musicians themselves, you can hear in a musical composition who has been classically trained. And if they haven't been classically trained and have a really good inner ear, like Nobuo Uematsu, it, there is a difference of quality. Just there just is. There's a difference of quality. So it is hopeful, all that to say, it is hopeful that she has an orchestral background of some kind. Working with John Williams, Vanity Fair, how did you and Williams come to work in tandem? Natalie Holt, Obi-Wan is a legacy character that John hadn't written a theme for because he died early, quite, uh, quite early on in A New Hope. That's no... Uh, just as an aside, that's no reason why Obi-Wan shouldn't have a theme. First of all, sure, yeah, he he died in the first film of the original trilogy, but Williams had the opportunity to compose a theme for the prequels because Obi-Wan was in all those. <laughs> so so that that's kind of a silly reason. Moving forward, it's the only legacy character he hadn't done. That's saying the same thing in two sentences. So he spoke to Lucas Will, uh, Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy instead and said, I want to write, um, oh, I want to write Benny a theme. <laughs> That's kind of adorable. So who can deny him that? And he did, he wrote the Obi-Wan theme, the Obi theme. <laughs> and it just embodies the spirit of the show entirely. Vanity Fair. How does this, how does his contribution fit with the broader music you created for the show? Natalie Holt. For me, the tent poles are set out by John Williams. There are elements in the show that are new and fresh, and I've been able to have my own interpretation with these elements that I can't reveal. Of course you can't. Uh, so it's been glorious working with my hero and also bringing my own voice to the show. You know, again, that language, you know, again, as artists, be very careful. I want to bring my own voice to the thing. It's like, no, you'll... That that will that's inevitable, you know. That's that's evident, and and your work will be inevitably heard on the show. That this whole bringing my voice, you know, it's it's very it's a very artsy thing to say. Um, so I would ju I would just be careful with that kind of language. Again, not digging at her, but again, she has to hype up this 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 interview. So I understand she's using this kind of language. Vanity Fair. How would you describe his new Obi Wan theme? And then I um I did mention in the previous article it's reflective and entirely appropriate. It's wistful, but there's an element of hope to it. And isn't this interesting? I don't think this has anything to do with the music. I, I don't think I've read this far, but let's go ahead and read this. The return of Darth Vader. This is wonderful news, right? Because Darth Vader has to be on Tatooine or or has to fight Obi Wan. I am not a fan of this uh, this method of storytelling when it comes to Obi Wan's isolation on Tatooine. That's what makes him such a cool character to begin with, because he sacrificed after he's lost everything. He makes the sacrificial decision, the the personal sacrifice to watch over Luke in hopes that Luke will bring hope to the galaxy. He doesn't have to have adventures with Darth Vader. He can have his own adventures on Tatooine, but he still has to keep a really low profile. 
Again, the John Jackson Miller book said that, uh, portrayed that very well in its own adventure, in its own way. But no, no, we have to have Darth Vader because he has to be everywhere. Don't get me wrong, Darth Vader is cool, but he should not be involved at this point with Obi-Wan's story. But let's go ahead and keep reading. The Return of Darth Vader. This is wonderful news. Natalie Holt turned in a positively wonderful score for Loki. I said that before. Oh, and if she brings that orchestral... Okay, this is important. It, and if she brings that orchestral quality to the Obi-Wan series, we could be in line for a very Star War, a very special Star Wars experience. Okay, so I want to make this real clear. The score for Loki was not orchestral. It, it was not an orchestra. It had some orchestra instruments in it, whether that was from an actual orchestra or a library. Maybe she recorded, maybe she did record for uh, Loki, uh, record an orchestra for Loki, maybe in, at Abbey Road Studios. I don't know. But it was, it's like 85% electronic, that score. If, if there is orchestra, it's 15%. It's like 15 to 20%. The, the majority of it is electronic. So either these writers don't know how to write about music or they're being insincere, saying, oh, no, no, this is this is orchestral. Um, so we'll see. But no, Loki, maybe there were some moments with only orchestra, but the majority of it that I heard, that I had heard uh, on the various platforms, it was electronic. So that, that's a, I wanted to... Uh, Make that distinction there. And with John Williams on hand to help stick the landing and return and the return of Darth Vader, catapulting the series into a, into the stratosphere. I don't like how they, they start and end these sentences. Holt's score will easily become the soundtrack to our summer. And that is an that is an exciting prospect. Her approach has been to incorporate a haunting a hauntingly nostalgic theme throughout the soundtrack. That's good. Therefore, it's safe to assume that the Imperial March will feature prominently. Okay. And if she can incorporate the atmosphere of Revenge of the Sith into proceedings, is she? That's kind, that's kind of a bold thing to write uh, down. Then we will. Uh, then we may hear, then we may be about to hear the most organic and transitional score to bridge the gap between the sagas. And that alone makes Holt's work unmissable. So these are, these are big assumptions on what she is going to be doing for the show. I don't think it's going to be that. Now I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe she will incorporate the Imperial March. Maybe she will incorporate a lot of uh, John Williams themes and that's fine. Again, I'm not a fan that, that Darth Vader is uh, is in the show at all, even though I'm not watching the show. <laughs> this ugh, the show. I I just yeah, it's gonna be it's not gonna be Obi Wan. Let's just say that. Um, but yeah, these are really big bold assumptions of of what this music could be. I'm going to speculate the the opposite. I actually think she will be working a little bit with John Williams. Um, as far as inspiration, and then she's going to go off to electronic world music. That is that is my guess. Are you excited about the new series? No. Is Natalie Holt the right composer to bring our beloved Jedi Master back to the screen? Maybe. <laughs> uh, sound off in the comments section below. So stop that screen share. All right. And we'll uh, go into the comments and then we'll read one final one. Oh, Ace is, Ace is in the house being, uh, working with my, my, my figures, figures of speech. Well, good, good to have you, uh, live. Jigawatt asks, say the music is good. Does anyone think their characterization of Obi-Wan will actually honor the character in music. Yeah, I mean, you, you make a very good point. Let's say the score does work. Let's say the music is absolutely right. I don't think this is gonna be the right treatment of Obi-Wan. So even if even if Williams was was 100% in, in the score, uh, 
it's kind of like with the last Jedi or or the sequel trilogy. He was all he was all in the score, but it it didn't it it just wasn't the right characterizations. And my foot fell asleep. It wasn't the right uh, characters. It wasn't the right story. It just wasn't the right story to follow the original trilogy, even though he composed for all of it. And actually, um, I have been listening, not really on his main channel, but I have been enjoying um, Thor Skywalker talk with his wife. He has a separate channel where um, they, they talk about the news of Star Wars. And I just kind of want to fill in like what's, what's happening. And actually, um, I noticed that Thor Skywalker is a little bit more honest with his speculation on his smaller channel with his wife than on his main channel. I don't really listen to his main channel anymore. Um, but, uh, and she's she's kind of on the nose with different things too. Uh, where, where was I going with that? Um, he had misgivings about the score of the sequel trilogy. He didn't feel the score was right, even though John Williams composed for it. And, and I did an analysis like one or two years ago. I, I, did, a, I did a fixed video of my analysis of the sequel trilogy. Uh, was it the whole sequel trilogy? I think I did not just the whole sequel trilogy, but I think I've done, I did at least The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. And there were a lot of musical missteps, even by Sir Williams. There was there there were a lot of musical missteps, and 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 it's you know it's debatable. Like it, you know people often speculate, well, maybe he was, you know, pushed into this position by the producer or by the director. And I, I, I wouldn't put it past that situation to be the case. I, I would, I would say that is probably very much the case because there was, there were a lot of musical cues that just did not work, just did not work. And, and, and Thor Skywalker himself, you know, he's usually Mr. Positive. He's usually Mr. Diplomatic. And he, he, he didn't think that music was right for that sequel trilogy. And so even, and 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 that's just kind of with with the, the treatment and management of the characters from the original trilogy and and also the the new characters that they escorted in it was just all it was all wrong you know as far as the the heart of star wars is concerned and and a lot of people would agree with that <laughs> concerning the sequel trilogy and so even if the music but let's say the music was perfect you know in the sequel trilogy it, it's still wouldn't have worked because of the story. And the same is true for this Obi-Wan series. Even if Natalie Holt with John Williams, even if she adhered to his signature to the letter and the score was great and it was objectively superb, the mismanagement I know they're going to have with the character Obi-Wan Kenobi and all these side characters and all these, this thing with Darth Vader or whatever, the mismanagement will actually ruin the show, no matter how good the music is. And that and that's that kind of validates my argument that that music, as important as it is in the filmmaking world, in the filmmaking process, it is secondary to the story. It's secondary to how things are executed in the story. Even if it's 100%, even if it's an A-plus, top-tier score, it just, it, it will fall flat. A music score... And I'll, I know people could disagree with me on this, but a music score does not justify the quality of the film. It can better the film and it can worsen the film, but it doesn't overall justify um, the overall quality of the film. That's just where I stand as a composer and as a musician, as someone who loves music, that's, that's my position in film. Sir Stone says, you don't need to interject, oh, sorry, you don't need to inject your sensibilities into the art you make. They will emerge from naturally. Yeah, you're absolutely spot on about that. Good, good job. It's self, it's self-evident. Your art is pretty much self-evident. Daniel Heron just got back from the John Williams concert at the Pittsburgh Symphony. That is so cool. I saw your live, you, you, you I think you, uh, I saw your live uh, video. I think it was like five minutes or something before the show started. I hope it was wonderful. That is great. I'm sure, I'm sure you're kind of on a high right now <laughs> at the hotel. Um, but yeah, good job. I, I did, did, did they give you the, the encores that you wanted? Um, that's, that's pretty cool. That is good. I'm glad you had a nice evening and, and, uh, 
Yeah, I, it, it's such, it is wonderful to see a, a fantastic symphony and, and a beautiful concert hall. You were dressed up, of course, for the concert hall. It looked like a, an amazing hall from what I could see on the feed, but that's great. That is great. Final Fantasy XII says, Hayden Christensen is going to be in the show as Darth Vader. Despite the fact that Obi-Wan and Anakin have never met in the 19 years after the Revenge of the Sith. I know, they're, they're, just, they're just changing up the story. Just just for spectacle. And that's all that, that is, you know. Professor Geek has a... The real question uh, is... Let me say that again. The real question is, when are they going to give Ahsoka the essential backbone of Star Wars, the epic theme that she deserves? Back when I liked the character, I had an idea for her theme. Actually, the, the end credits... That that episode where she walks away from the Jedi, that sounded like her theme because it was sad and tragic. Um, you know, the more I think about how her writing is in the Clone Wars, I, I I'm gonna say she just she could have been better. But if she were to have a theme, she'd probably have that one music piece that's played when when the credits are um happening where it's not the main star wars music anymore where it's it's a very sad theme that that's what made me so mad about her coming back in season seven because the music was so good for her leaving the jedi it's like gosh <laughs> but but the real question to the real question prof is when are they going to introduce ahsoka to the obi-wan series and and when is she going to school obi-wan for failing her master I kind of want that to happen, okay? <laughs> I want bad things to happen to that show. <laughs> I know, that's, that's a terrible thing to say. That's such a, that's, you're so cynical. No, I'm at that point where I would kind of have fun with it, but that's just me being honest. All right, a few more comments and then we'll get to one, uh, one more article and then we'll continue with comments. Jigawat says, Obi-Wan cannot face Vader unless it is a force, force vision or dream. If there is an actual event in the series, um, this will greatly break continuity. Well, my prediction, it's not even a prediction. My thoughts are it will be an actual encounter because the media has hyped it up so much. Like, this is going to knock your socks off. This is going to be amazing. It, it, <laughs> I don't think they could put that, you know, at the front of it, you know, um, if it were just a dream. Now, I like as far as continuity, I would hope it's a force vision. I would hope it's a vision. But the thing is, a vision like a force vision is to imply is to aid the force user to the next decision in their lives. Really. Mentally and emotionally and spiritually, what would benefit Obi-Wan from having a force vision of dueling Vader? Because he's already making the he's already making the right choice by watching after Luke, like watching over him. So I as far as the story is concerned, it it, it doesn't even make sense that he would have any kind of encounter with Vader. But whatever. Oh, Cole Hart is in the house. Welcome. It seems like you know my prof. Uh, always great to see you on the screen uh, stream. Uh, he's he's telling this to Professor. The Professor. I just finished the 2021 Dune adaptation. It respects the source material and fans perfectly. Have you seen it? Uh, and would you do an analysis? Well, I don't know about the prof, but I'm I'm reading Dune right now. I know. I've, I've been reading <laughs> Dune very slowly because I haven't had that much time to read nonfiction. Um, actually, Fiction. Dune is fiction. Uh, I I don't know if I, I... I would ask around before I would watch the, the adaptation of Dune. Um, my, my dad loves the story, and I can't remember what he said about the film. Um, he loves Dune. He, he said when he was a kid, he just couldn't put it down. He'd like, he would read all night um, and, and just not put the book down. Uh, he really liked that first story. I'll have to ask him. I'm 
I might actually, if I, if I watch it, it'd probably be years down the road. Um, because I, I just, I have such a strong image of what it looks like, you know, when I read the book, what it sounds like as far as if there are to be a musical score. And Hans Zimmer ain't it. Uh, let's see. Okay, one, one more comment and then we'll read the article. Eric Woods is in the house. Welcome. Johnston pretty much left uh, John Williams with a temp track on The Last Jedi. Uh, not with much more communication than that. The Rise of Skywalker is just a mess overall, but Williams did his best. Uh, but it's the lesser of the three sequel scores. I, I thought John Williams did it all. Am I wrong about that? Go ahead and clarify. Uh, I'll, I'm going to read this next article and then talk and then get back to the chat. Uh, but uh, no, that's interesting. I didn't, excuse me, I got to sneeze one second. All right, I'm better. I think it's the leftover pollen on my pants. Prof and I were walking around the yard and we just sopped up this pollen. I know sopped up is more for eating barbecue, but <laughs> it was a lot of pollen. And I, and I work, I work dark colors, you know, as you can see. And so you could see the pollen really clearly. My, my shirt feels a little, it feels crooked on one sleeve. I don't know why. Weird. I'm just noticing this. Okay, let's share the next article. All right. You see that? Good. All right. Obi-Wan Kenobi composer Natalie Holt is the first. If I have to say it again, is the first woman to score a live action Star Wars project. Okay, so remember when, uh, I think it was Sir Stone. Oh no, I, I can't remember who in the chat said, maybe maybe they were talking about all the other, you know, Star Wars video games and stuff like that. Well, now, now we know it's all about the live action. It's all about the films. It's all about the television shows. So we have to, again, guys, we have to make it so important that she is the first of seven or eight people to be announced as the first woman to, to compose for Star Wars. Goodness. Anyway. She wrote for Loki and she's writing for Bad Girl. So, so that's again, you know, that those, those do have cultural implications, by the way. All right, let's, let's read it again. You know, just because no one else is saying this, we have to, say it again for this uh, article. Obi-Wan Kenobi composer Natalie Holt is officially the first woman to score a live action Star Wars project. The news was revealed during an interview with Vanity Fair. Uh, Loki and Batgirl composer Natalie Holt discussed the honor of providing music to that galaxy far, far away um, and working with Star Wars legend John Williams. Um, and, and I think some of it's the same, but I, I think there are new things about this article. That's why I chose the three articles. Obviously, says Natalie, um, I'm just thrilled to be mentioned in the same breath as John Williams. That would be cool, admittedly. It's been exciting and overwhelming at times because I'm such a fan. I want to pay respect to the history of it and to do it justice as well. So that is a very good attitude to have when approaching this. So again, her sensibilities and her wanting to pay respect to what has come before that, that would, as far as the music score is concerned, that gives me hope. The show itself doesn't give me hope, but at least her being mindful of that gives me hope. While we've been, uh, while we, while, uh, this isn't her quoting, this is the, the main, um, writer. While we've seen a bit of footage of the upcoming Obi Wan Kenobi series, we have yet to hear Holt's work as the trailers have featured John Williams' Duel of the Fates, which that was that was only to get people suckered in or sucked in. Suckered in, I guess, too. <laughs> she did tease, however, that she grew up with Williams' work and her starting point was just being a big, huge fan of the music for the show already. She also added that she's a violinist. Uh, I I, Holt says, come from an orchestral background, so I've uh, been able to do something on an epic scale with these big forces. Furthermore, she will be singing and playing viola and violin throughout the score. I love, I love, I see this more than once. Every time you mention both violin and viola, for, for people who are not music writers or musicians, they always put viola first, then violin. Maybe it's an alph alphabetical thing, 
but usually you should say violin and viola. I'm sorry, violists. You're not secondary in the music, but like like that as far as the hierarchy of strings, as far as register, the violins are on top, the violas are in the in the middle register, and it's situated as such. So I uh, like actually I had a website. They need to take that picture down. Actually, I think they still have a picture of me as a teacher for that studio, and. And I never corrected it because I never went to that website, but they, I, I did say that I could teach viola. And so she said, she put in, uh, you know, Michelle, teacher of viola, violin and composition. And I don't, I don't play viola at all. I can teach the upper technique of viola, but I don't play viola. And I just, I just, you know, kind of find that funny. Anyway, that was a sidebar. Speaking of Williams, moving on. Uh, she also shared that one of the main reasons he decided to write the Obi-Wan theme series is that he's the only legacy character he has done. Um, so they're, they're kind of saying the same things. So why did I choose this article? There has to be a reason. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think, yes. Okay. So let's, let's read these final paragraphs here. That's what I was uh, wanting to refer to. I think, says Holt, it's an emotional score, it has, it, it, and it does have its root in the Star Wars tradition, and a little more than the Mandalorian does. Well, I should hope so. If you guys, if you, if you guys have seen my commentary on the Mandalorian, that was a crazy break from the the signature sound of John Williams. That was all electronic music, and it was it was like C plus quality. Actually, you know what? I'm, now, if you're a composer doing a major film or a, a highly anticipated television series, you need to be pretty much a master at your craft. So I'm going to give The Mandalorian score a C minus, and I'm going to give The Book of Boba Fett. Well, at least the theme is is a D minus. <laughs> um, so she says she says that um, it has its roots. Uh, her score, at least, has its roots in the Star Wars tradition a little more than the Mandalorian has. Well, I would say it should be a lot more than the Mandalorian because that was a huge departure from the signature sound of Star Wars. She says that we had a um, we had a collection of two hundred and fifty horns and flutes. That sounds cool, but why? And I used a hunting horn a hunting horn in the score. We also, um, we're also blending the orchestra with some more modern synth sounds as well. And there you have it. That's her new and fresh take on it. And again, it's not new and fresh anymore because Kevin Kiner did the electronic track with uh, season seven and um, uh, Joseph Shirley and Ludwig Göransson, they've done strictly electronic. So there's nothing fresh about using the electronic score. Now she says, this is interesting. I, maybe she was careless with her wording here, but I'm going to just point this out. She says modern synths, so that is really important. If they are modern synths, then yes, they can sound very sophisticated, highly sophisticated sounds that can work well with the orchestra. It's not synths like you would have your analog synths of the 70s and 80s. No, these, these should be contemporary, modified and made and manufactured in the last three to five years to have it be a sophisticated sound. So hopefully she has a very good ear with blending electronics with orchestra. I hope, I hope, I hope. She did not really have that with Loki. She, it was pretty much its own electronic personality. So we'll see with Obi-Wan. And then she concludes, it's definitely what we're used to and, um, it's definitely what we're used to in a few new elements. Uh, that's that's an incomplete sentence. So I, I wonder what she was trying to say there. Uh, in closing, Holt discussed that she wanted to bring in many different types of musical genres and cultures into her score along alongside making it feel, and here's the word, otherworldly. Okay, I'm going to go on a rant. Uh, let's, uh, okay, we'll, 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 <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm really thirsty. <laughs> it's probably the my allergies or whatever. So yeah, let's let's talk about let's talk about making it feel otherworldly. Okay, this is this is a little ridiculous. I'm gonna say again, I, I don't think she's really thinking what she's saying. I, again, she wants to hype up your feelings of anticipating this show, so she is using language a little bit. I would say loosely. Um, but let's actually really unpack this this uh, this goal to 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 use world instruments from other cultures to make it otherworldly. 
I'm actually going to stop sharing this because the I just want to I just want to stop at this one point. Otherworldly. Okay. So so she has in mind it's sounding like she has in mind to use different world instruments, you know, of, of East Asia, maybe Africa, parts of Africa, maybe parts of South America. Um, maybe, you know, something specific like Moroccan instruments or whatever, uh, to make it feel other otherworldly. There is a real problem with using that attitude, using that word otherworldly. The attitude uh, behind that is it, it is problematic when you're talking about Star Wars for, for two, for a couple of reasons regarding at least Obi-Wan. Um, the, the, the first, just the main thing when, when, when composers are saying, yeah, we, it's a big, vast galaxy. We have to make it sound otherworldly. John Williams did all right. You know, he made a galaxy far, far away sound all right. And he used strictly the Western classical orchestra and it was fine. He made it sound otherworldly. Leia's theme, for instance, you know, it, it has this interesting tone. Yoda's theme has this very mysterious tone. It sounds otherworldly. You can make a traditional orchestra sound otherworldly, not just with traditional techniques and sounds of the orchestra, but with also extended techniques, you know, circular aspirated breathing with, with the winds and the brass um, inside the piano, uh, you know, working with different parts of the percussion, like different parts of the structure of the timpani or the chimes. You have a lot to work with as far as extended techniques are concerned with, with the string section. You can make the orchestra sound completely devoid of the traditional sounds of, of an orchestral sound, the traditional sound. But even as a traditional orchestra, you can make it sound otherworldly. You know why? Because John Williams did that. That's the first thing. Star Wars doesn't need to sound otherworldly. The second thing is... Uh, we're on Tatooine, hopefully, right? Right? And it most of, or, or a good chunk, a good chunk of the original Star Wars film, now known as A New Hope, a good chunk of that was, it started on Tatooine. And we felt, we felt the vastness and the, the strangeness and the foreign, the foreign feel of Tatooine with, with John's, John Williams' score. So, it doesn't need to sound anything different from William's signature sound because we're in the same location with the same character just like 20 years back, you know? He's not old Obi-Wan Kenobi, but he's still Obi-Wan Kenobi. Use the traditional score. Now, maybe she's thinking, well, we want to use these different otherworldly instruments um, for different parts of the galaxy, which does tell me that we're not going to be on Tatooine for a lot of the time. I'm not watching it, but that's my prediction. That you're you're gonna find at least Obi-Wan in another on another planet, not true to his character, or you're gonna find different characters on other planets trying to hunt Obi-Wan down. Now, again, you can still use the traditional orchestra to make it sound different from Tatooine. If you want a different planet to sound different from Tatooine, that's fine. But again, like Williams didn't work that like with that with the prequels, but we still felt the uniqueness of Naboo. We still felt the uniqueness of Coruscant, still with the traditional traditional score. That's the first problem with the attitude of trying to make it sound otherworldly. The second thing is uh, the, the 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 word otherworldly just really doesn't make sense now in the modern context of how we see and hear music production to date. Today, we have the most sophisticated of electronic instruments built for high fidelity, least expensive amount of CPU processing. That, that's not true, actually. My Logic projects and and even Super Collider actually can, if you're not careful, it can take up a lot of CPU. But at the very least, you have so much capacity. You have, you are able to do sound synthesis and electronic music at 64-bit high fidelity sounds. You can hear things in a, on a very sophisticated level now with, with production of electronic music, with the manufacturing of electronic instruments, and then also just the post-production high quality value of your entertainment system like your home theater 
we have the ability here on planet Earth to make very otherworldly sounds, sounds that sound familiar and then sounds that just, they, they resonate with you, but they do sound different. They do sound unique. But not only that, we have the ability to generate beautiful world instruments, like instruments from and, and playing from different parts of the world you know, from Japan, from Morocco to Brazil to all these, all these wonderful places with these unique styles and, and the unique culture, you know, that the aural sonic cultures of these of these sounds, we have the ability to on planet Earth to make it cannot be more diverse, like the 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 the, the possibility, the possibilities, the sonic possibilities are endless producing here on planet Earth is we, we can make planet earth with our music sound something out of this world. What do I mean? It's like, it, it, it's kind of, okay. I'm just, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> it, it just, to me, sounds so myopic. Like, oh, well, we can't make, we can't make Tatooine sound like what we make in planet earth. We can't make, we can't make Tatooine sound like it's, um, it's, it's Western classical or whatever. You know, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Maybe, maybe if I have a better understanding, like a better grasp of what I want to say, um, I might put this on a, a separate video. But it's this. I think it's I think it's Hans Zimmer with his, his approach to the Dune track. He's like, there's there's one point in his interview. He said, you know, maybe I'm going to try to do his accent, but I'm going to fail completely you know maybe we we will evolve to a species a human species where we won't need this primitive rhythm where we we won't need the sense of beat we won't need the sense of rhythm we will have evolved to something so much more uh, sophisticated like as if rhythm is not sophisticated i he, he didn't say it exactly like that but that was his attitude for dune like you got to go to dune and not sound like this world it's like there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of composers out there composing highly sophisticated sounds and music that can sound otherworldly, but we still need that human element of beat and rhythm and register and distance and, and all of that. And so this idea that, that we have to make Star Wars sound alien. See, I think that's what she means. If she doesn't mean that, then maybe she means something else, but definitely with Hans Zimmer. We have, we've got to make Dune sound alien, like we're not, we, we've never seen this before. And I'm like, I'm like, no, like we can, we can here on earth, here on planet earth, we can do a, a, a diverse, like endless possibilities of sounds and textures and, and structure and, and all of that. So I thought that was a rant and I don't even know if that made sense. <laughs> But this 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 idea of having to make Star Wars sound alien is a very myopic perspective. It's like, no, like the orchestra can sound incredibly diverse in sound and in structure. So anyway, I'm running out of water. I'm going to I'm going to listen to the replay of my little rant because it I have this in my head. And hopefully that makes sense. But if it doesn't, I'm going to, I will have like a video essay because I have stuff to say regarding that. So anyway, that was, that was a side rant. I uh, probably lost a few viewers for that. And then uh, I'm not going to share the, the, the screen anymore, but just to conclude, um, she does uh, mention there are some Latin influences in one of the planets. There's some Thai, there's some Hong Kong sounds. Uh, that are more Eastern. Definitely uh, you take flavors from around the world and then try to turn them into something otherworldly. Uh, you're on Star Wars. You're, you're scoring a planet. It has to have some scale. And it's like, well, yeah, incorporate world instruments. But, but at the same time, it's like, it just, just kind of, I don't know. Anyway, that's it. That, those were the articles. Um, let's, uh, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to take just like a two minute break, grab some water and, and then, um, then I'll, I'll, I'll get to your comments. Uh, no music now. Um, but we'll just, I'll be really quick. One second.
All right. Thanks, guys. Let's get into the chat. We'll uh, talk about, uh, uh, let's see, C catching up. Um. Eric Wood says, in my opinion, Williams' The Force Awakens is a masterpiece. He gave it his all in that film as if it was his last. I consider it one of the top five scores written in the past 10 years. Um, I would say out of the three, it's probably the best. I, I, Ray's, Ray's theme is okay. It's a little confusing. Um, I know people, I know people love her theme. Uh, it is a little confusing. Um, he, he worked with instruments that kind of make it sound like Harry Potter, uh, at least at the very beginning. And it's kind of, I mean, okay, oh, no, I'll be fair. I'll be objective. It does sound like a Star Wars theme. Um, and and it, it is good. I, I would just say get branching off into, I can't remember. I think it has like a really long intro or something. It just, you, you don't, it took me a few good listens to hear it, to remember the theme. I have it in my head now. Um, so it's a good theme. I The structure of it was a little off. Um, and the instruments at the start of it, it sounds like Harry Potter. Uh, what I didn't appreciate, and again, this could be a decision made by the producer or the um, director. There was no Kylo Ren theme. Kylo had, he had like four or five notes and that's it. But as far as the atmosphere, like as far as scene by scene, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. It would probably be, probably be really good. But uh, that might sound like I have a chip in my shoulder. <laughs> not not against Williams, but just against the, the sequels. They're going to retcon everything. They don't care about canon. Oh, I, I said this before on my stream. Give it till 2030. Give it, give it till the year 2030, and they will redo the originals and ahsoka will be in the originals she'll be fighting with princess leia because they can't explain her absence you know somehow they're, they're trying to explain her absence uh now it's it's okay um it's all right it's the ex here's the thing do like han zimmer is known to be brilliant because of his experience it's the it's the theatrical experience um Dune is, as far as the score itself, is physically taxing. There are some very beautiful moments in it. There are some very key, poignant things about it. But at the end of the day, it's like, oh, he could have done better. He he really could have done better. He's very um he's very much about the experience. What sounds could bring uh to 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 you? You're like like oh. The visceral. He he's all about the visceral, and I think, I think that's a trend that is going to continue for the next ten to twenty years. Um, and then we we just need to get back to the the themes. I I don't. I, I've never seen the film, and I know. Uh, uh, how do you how do you pronounce his name? Villeneuve. He did the Arrival, and I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that film. But. Uh, no, do, I mean, Hans Zimmer has potential, but he's squandering it. <laughs> it's he he has the potential of being having incredibly memorable, beautiful music, and he's got the beauty and he's got the impact, but he's also got this the low end of that subwoofer. It needs to stop. <laughs> it needs to stop. I'm going to put put this bring this to the table because I think I think this is important. Dune 2021 leaves the gate with an unacceptable gender swap and other changes that ignore the Jungian exploration of the feminine and masculine struggle in seminal uh that that is seminal to the original novel. Yeah, and if you don't have those roles, if you don't have the the female uh power role and then if you don't have the masculine, like if you don't have the feminine the masculine, the dichotomy and then the synthesis of how that's going to work out you know you just 
you're you're missing some important things. But again, I'm reading Dune really kind of for the first time, so I'm not an expert at it. Um, let's see. Oh, well, <laughs> Final Fantasy, you make a good point. Well, you know what they say, you can't spell the word ignorant without I-G-N. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm not digging at that, that new source. I, I, I don't know. Um, by the way, Eric was, I'm, I'm usually forward about my opinions on music. I, I, and I hope it's not that off putting working in electronic my, music myself and hearing, like I listen to electronic music all the time. It's like when I hear the potential that Hans Zimmer has, it's like he can't, he can be so much better than he is. I just, I just want to say that. Hans Zimmer, if you ever watch this, you know you could do better. I know you know. The, th the things I've heard with, with, with the, the Lion King and um, uh, the, the, some of the soundtracks for, um, was it The Lone Ranger? Pirates of the Caribbean? And then your electronic stuff that you've done for Interstellar and Dune? Oh my gosh. There's, there's, yeah, he, he. He knows he can do it better. I, I know he knows. <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah, and actually, that, that's. I, I was kind of thinking about that uh, Final Fantasy. I hope I hope I wasn't redundant in my presentation because I knew that that every article had at least one different thing to say, and I didn't really prep the read reading that well this time. So seriously, aren't there many art news articles and our channels that say the same thing? It's very redundant. It is. I've got a bad feeling about this. Every Star Wars movie to date. Well, did Star Wars ever sound otherworldly? Well, like it... It, it sounded like Star Wars. I, I know that sounds kind of simple, but... Um, it, it sounded like you were in a galaxy far, far away. It had its own signature sound. It sounds different from Indiana Jones, you know? It sounds different from Jurassic Park, you know? Even though it's all the same guy writing the writing the music. But it sounds... Um, but but it, it was more operatic. And we, at least in, in the Western culture, at least in Western society, but I know parts of Japan and South Korea, they, they've adopted these traditions too, uh, in their own ways, um, you know, Chinese theater, uh, Chinese opera, whatever the case is, the, the Western mind frame of storytelling goes back to things like the operas of the 1800s, you know, the 17 and 1800s. And, and so it, it's very operatic. It's a, it's a very operatic piece of musical literature that, that John Williams has, has given us. For, for the Star Wars. And it's it's like a three-act structure. It's like a main three-act structure. And then uh, the first act has its own three-act structure. Second, third, they, they have their own three-act structure. And and it's it's seminal in that way. And, and I don't even think Star Wars needs to sound otherworldly. I don't want Star Wars to sound alien. I've read a lot. I, I, I quit reading short fiction. Um, I quit reading short science fiction written by today's writers because it just got even with the popular magazines it got bad it just got bad writing it got political just it just got bad all around uh very very bad characters you're supposed to root for and um and where was i going with that but but the the i did enjoy a lot of the short fiction i i read and and the the, the fiction that i really did enjoy was very otherworldly it was very, very alien. It was like, I remember this reading about this one astronaut that he had to like understand like the, the, the scrape, the, this alien that kind of was bird-like, but also skeletal, the scraping of, of their, the, the, their skeleton to, to communicate with, with this man. And he had no idea what they were saying. I mean, that, that's, that's supposed to be, that's an example of otherworldliness where you're trying to understand an alien and the only way they're communicating is nothing through their esophagus, nothing through their throat. They're, they're scraping their bones, you know? I mean, that's, that's, that's very jarring to think of as, as a human being, but that's, that's an example of what otherworldly should 
should be what alien, like when you're not understanding an alien race. Now, the thing with Star Wars, even though they have lots of different aliens, a lot of their aliens, at least two families of aliens, um, but even more than that, are humanoid. You know, Ahsoka's technically an alien, but she's humanoid. Um that that's why there's like like there's no you don't feel off when like a clone trooper marries an alien woman because she's a she's a twilic you know she's she's a twilic with a french accent you know it's like or or um this show rebels where is it is it kanan who has a relationship with hera that's not off-putting because she's a humanoid um of some kind, you know, she's an alien. We can all understand. She speaks basic, you know, she speaks like us. She talks like us. She acts like us. She reacts like us. Um, and so that's that. I just want to be sure my computer's kind of getting a little warm, but in any case, um, yes, yeah, this, this concept of trying to make different planets of star Wars, otherworldly or alien is just, yeah. Anyway, I'll, I probably have, gone too far with that point but yeah uh, eric uh, eric eric was says endor and ewoks has a particular sound to it yeah and, and it sounds great but guess what it used it used the orchestra you know it was perfect shot down in flames is here <laughs> yeah the cantina band sounds otherworldly but it's ragtime uh it's um Yeah, it's got a, a tiny bit of ragtime. Um, it's more it's more like a big band, even though it's a smaller ensemble. Yeah, exactly, you know? Um, but it was the Ewok singing in their language. Uh, uh, did the actual sound, soundtrack sound alien? No, I mean, it sounded... It, it, if I were to put it to a particular um, nation uh, on Earth, it would kind of have like a, oh, no, this isn't a good comparison, but it's the closest thing I could think of right now. Like a Slavic fairy tale, like a weird kind of like whimsical kind of fairy, fairy tale out of, you know, the Slavic culture. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a bad comparison. But again, it sounds really close to what we're used to. <clears throat> Getting worked up. Well, I hope it made sense. That's all. <laughs> And if it didn't, I'm not going to like delete the video, obviously, but uh, it's, yeah, it's something I might kind of think of. Um, uh, yeah, Eric makes a good point. I have no um, problem introducing new instrumentation as, as long as it fits with the story, not different for different sake. And that's what... The Mandalorian was. That's what Gurrinson did. Now, I don't think... Okay, here's what I'm, I will say. I don't think Natalie Holt will approach it like Gurrinson. And, and that's for the best, by the way. Especially with a character like Obi-Wan. But because of that, I'm actually holding her to a higher standard. If she says she's influenced by Williams and working as his signature as the impetus, then... If if that does not come out of the score, I, I would hold her more accountable than I would her, hold uh, Gurnson. Gurnson may have loosely said he's been inspired by Williams. Maybe he wanted that terrible Williams esque, you know, part of the Mandalorian theme. It's so badly written. We, our standards of excellence is just going down, 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 down. <sighs> Anyway, um, that actually might be a separate topic, uh, the standards of excellence. It's not an easy task to nail that Zimmer dialect, so British and yet so German at the same time. Yeah, I know. I'm like, I don't know what I sound like. Uh, we don't need Star Wars to sound alien. We need it to sound Russian, more Stravinsky inspired Tatooine music, please. And I would hope so. <laughs> I would hope so. Now, the thing is, again, I said this before, Natalie Holt has, she, I think she will be able to portray, I think she will be able to musically portray 
Obi-Wan in his state of isolation because she does work with emotional cues very, very well. So I have no doubt she, she can do that. But if it starts sounding like Loki, we've got a problem because they're two different characters in two different universes. He had two motifs. What? His main theme and a seduction theme. What? But his main theme was a motif, though. It wasn't even a full theme. It was dun, 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 bum. That was it. And then it was a repeat of that. That's not a theme. Um, Eric Woods also says, I do agree that Zimmer is hot and cold. I mean, just listen to Wonder Woman 84. Sensational! His score to Dune needs context. Once you hear it with the film, you'll get it, I hope. Well, I mean, um, that was the same experience as Blade Runner 2049 where you could get you could get the score on its own but it really that score was meant for the visual now i'm not okay i'm going to be careful saying this because maybe that's his goal you know maybe maybe it is han zimmer's goal to have a visceral film music hybrid experience where where, where the two are equal now if that's his goal as an artist that's that's fine. And and if and if that is his goal, he is executing it very well. So I will be objective about that. But when it's when it's music that's supposed to be really memorable, like themes again, guys, themes. <laughs> and and I'll, I'll hear the Dune score again. I, I mean, I remember liking it a little bit. I remembered some good stuff about it, but I just also remember that it just yeah. We'll see. Anyway, I don't know. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not being fair to Hans Zimmer. <laughs> if Ahsoka were to be trained by a Jedi Master, she would probably be trained by Shakti, as they are the same race. That would have been that would have been interesting. She'd probably be a much more well-rounded, well-written character if she was composed or if she was trained by Shakti. Um, I actually don't know the soundtrack for Wonder Woman 84. All I know is her theme for the DC universe or whatever what that Snyder thing was about was just straight up trash. It was absolute trash. And I think people might confuse, I'm not saying you, Eric Woods, because you you and Daniel, you know your soundtracks. I am not debating that. I, I've seen Daniel's live stream where you guys are talking and sometimes I'm doing something. So I'm not in the, uh, I'm not in the chat, but you guys do talk about like soundtracks so well, you guys know your soundtracks. Like I, I only know soundtracks from a composer's perspective, like what that would be. Uh, I, I don't own soundtracks, you know, um, you guys have your own libraries and, and so you guys definitely have your own great, great input. Um, and sometimes when I talk about music, I talk about the technical and analytical side of music where, where things should be done and, and improved upon, you know, for, for the music to work. All right. Perhaps uh, any other Jedi Master instead of Obi-Wan because he's got Anakin to deal with, nor Anakin because he never got the rank of Master until he became, uh, until he becomes uh, Darth Vader. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, again, I'm not totally against Anakin ever having a, a Padawan, but it really wasn't necessary to his story at the end of the day because he loses his love, Padme, and he loses his best friend, Obi-Wan. So. And that could work as a tragedy. Um, oh. Why Why are you saying goodnight to everyone, Go Team? Is everyone leaving? Uh, WW84 is an awful film, but yes, the score transcends it. The theme is outstanding. Listen to the first three tracks, uh, uh, three tracks on the original uh, uh, soundtrack. I might, um, if it's a, I don't know. Again, though, I don't think, I don't think A plus music justifies the film. That's just where I, where I stand. Uh, <laughs> Jake Ross says, maybe for a soundtrack to be more memorable, the movie and the music need to be top notch unless you are a person who really knows their music. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like for something like, like the original Lion King, the animation series, a beautiful animation, beautiful gripping story, wonderful characters, and a fantastic soundtrack, a, sound, a score. I mean, and that, that works. That That's the best you can do as far as movies are concerned. Okay. So, um, yeah. Oh man. Wow. <laughs> 
I didn't know we were almost two hours. Wow. She, okay. So, um, yeah, I hope, I hope I covered everything I wanted to cover as far as, um, Natalie Holt and, and her role. Um, man, guys, I, I do want to talk about, we'll close with my thoughts on Elon Musk taking, taking over Twitter. <laughs> Again, this is not a political stream, but I just kind of want to talk about it. Um, so, so we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit and then we'll wrap it up around the two hour mark. Um, but yeah, hopefully that that all made sense. Um, I think I think Natalie Holt, l l as a recap, I think Natalie Holt is a very capable composer who can compose music really well. She has done great stuff, and she can produce beautiful themes. And she is a capable violinist, and uh, she has the orchestral background. I think those are all the ingredients you need for a signature Star Wars sound. So. With that in mind, I think she could do very, very well. I have no hopes for the show, by the way, though. I just, I don't, I don't trust Disney as far as I could throw it. And that would be not far at all. <laughs> um, so, so I think she is, uh, um, she would be a very good candidate, I would say, that to, to produce that signature iconic Star Wars sound. I, I would say much more than people like Ludwig Göransson and Joseph Shirley. I'm sorry, they're, they, they've they gone the Hans Zimmer route. But here's the thing, I think people are gonna continue along that route. I don't think, this is my this is my prediction in the next five to 10 years, they will break. I, th I, I, I'm like 98% sure that they will break, cleanly break from the signature Williams sound and do their own thing with electronic music that's just that's just the general interest in in music for television shows these days um so yeah again i think she is very capable as a composer um i think she would she's a much better candidate than someone like gernson so we'll, we'll see what the score sounds like i won't listen to it until probably weeks after the the show is done and then i'll probably listen and have my thoughts on it, but, uh, I won't watch the show. <laughs> In any case, uh, that's that. So I think, uh, Dr. Y, if, he, if he's still around, did I mention shot down in flames? Yeah. Welcome. Um, Dr. Y, let's see if you have that old, um, oh, let's see. He had something. Okay. So you say, this is off subject, but uh, if you see a Dr. Y on Twitter, it, it is me. I have opened a new Twitter account after the recent news. Okay, yeah. So I know what we're talking about. So let's 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 talk about that and then we'll we'll wrap it up. I'm already low on this water too. So yeah, Elon Musk taking over Twitter. It's it's been a it's been a fun roller coaster of a ride to see. Um just his methods of business and uh, negotiations and just, um, you know, really, really Twitter, the elites behind Twitter showing their hand without any, showing their hand without any skin in the game. Now, I don't know much about business. I don't know much about stocks. I don't know much, much about all that, that to do about, you know, about business. <laughs> um, but just the, 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 the way the news has been covering this, or at least the people that I've been listening to covering this. So, so if you guys don't know, you probably, a lot of you guys know this, um, Elon Musk, I think has, I think officially has bought Twitter. If, if to my knowledge, I think he has paid for, wasn't it like $44 billion in cold, hard cash? To, to, to get to get Twitter. So if you're not if you're not aware of the, the story, so basically um, Elon Musk decided to buy shares. He, he decided to or no, he decided to, I'm sorry, buy stock in Twitter or uh, um, Twitter stock. And originally it was like nine point two percent of, of uh, all Twitter stock uh, with just cash he had, of course, because he's so like the, his net worth is crazy steep. Right. Um, and then the board, if you guys uh are aware of the story, the, the board on Twitter and the, the, the CEO, the, the current CEO standing in Twitter, um, welcomed 
like uh, almost as a proposal, like welcome Elon Musk to the board. Well, the condition of the board, if you are a member of the board of Twitter, you cannot exceed 14% of stock, Twitter stock. So rather than be accepted into the board and make decisions like, you know, Elon Musk making decisions as a board member. And of course, none of his decisions would fly because like they would all shut him down because they would have more, they would gain, say his, his whatever thing he, he would throw out there for the betterment of Twitter, <laughs> for the betterment of the system. Um, so he, he decided, well, I'm not going to be a board member and only cap it off at 14%. Uh, so he, I think he then exceeded, wasn't it like 52% or something? It was, it was crazy. And then he, he really tried to negotiate with, with these people. And then, then, then we were kind of seeing some, some things exposed, like certain ties to Saudi Arabia and stuff like that. It's like, wow, wow. Twitter. <laughs> so a couple of things like, so, you know, nefarious con connections, you know, with, with not so friendly people like you know, people who aren't so friendly to the United States, you know, and, um, you know, have have his hand in, in Twitter by a lot, by a huge margin. And then um, what else? Oh, but apparently like the 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 members of the board of Twitter, like they would have like a fraction of a fraction, like point zero zero two percent of stock. Like so Elon had nine point two percent. And then the rest of the board members had like point point like point zero zero three percent or whatever, like something crazy infinitesimal, like something crazy small. So um, they wouldn't negotiate with him, I understand. And then I think today he outright bought Twitter. And um, you know what? Even if he makes it a private company and even if you like pay five dollars a month to use it. I think. Most people don't care about that. I think most people care about transparency. Transparency, you know, what the rules are. And then posting whatever you want, you know, for free speech. Now, again, I'm not I'm not for being crass and I'm not for causing trouble publicly on the online square. Um, but that's, or in the online square, I think that's the, the better word to use. Um, but uh, I, I, I would say... Okay, so maybe Elon decided to to make this a private private establishment, have his own rules, be transparent about it, upholding free speech, and then maybe you do pay a fee to to use the service, whatever. Um, but if it really really started helping your marketing as an artist, because Twitter, unless you post something controversial, Twitter doesn't acknowledge you. Like what whatever videos, YouTube videos I post, whatever. Like if I have like a musical, like a really, you know, genius musical idea and I share it on Twitter, yeah, then I'll get a good substantial amount of likes and retweets, but not, not like maybe, maybe I don't think I have more than four retweets and then like 12 likes. I just, I'm just not popular. Twitter does not care because I'm not, I'm not controversial. The the one time I was remotely controversial by daring to say I, I support freedom, I got a lot of pushback. <laughs> And I got, I, I lost a lot of friends. Um, so I, I think this is great news. Um, people are really trying to spin it as if this is the most terrible thing in the world. Uh, again, I don't care if, it's, if it becomes a private company. I'll still probably use it. Uh, I was actually thinking about leaving Twitter. I, I left Minds. I just didn't care for Minds at all. Um, and I was thinking about like, eh, Twitter. People don't really care what I have to say, you know, and then I follow people, professionals and stuff. But yeah, I think there was at one point, like the White House was trying to, I heard like the White House was considering to, to do an investigation. I'm like, why? Well, I know why. It, it's it's a public square platform that that has been pretty much ruled by an elite form of thought. Let's just say that. <laughs> so I think, um, it's very nice to see a very, 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 very wealthy person kind of take control of the establishment per se. It's it's fun to watch. I don't think it's going to benefit me at all. I don't think it's going to worsen my situation either. I, I just find it fun to watch. So that's all I had to say. <laughs> all right. It's almost two hours. Uh, let's... Uh...
Okay, so it looks like there's there's some com conversation between Gigawatt and Eric Woods. Um, okay. All right, so I, I think that's everything. So anyway, what is on the dock for this week? Um, actually, it can be anything. It could be either Super Collider or it can be my original music, depending on how far I compose. Um, as 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 I had mentioned before last week, I'm, I'm I just really went on this creative turn for the better, and I, I've been composing, and I it it's a new style. I love it. I'm I'm really looking forward to what I will produce with this uh, style, this new style of music I'm exploring. But because it's a new style and it's a new formula per se, it, it's taking a lot longer to compose. Like I'm not as fast as composing because I I'm I'm really approaching a different style. So. If I have a lot, uh, you know, to 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 show, then I might produce um, a, a YouTube video with that. Um, but uh, uh, if not, I'll probably do some more sound experimentation with um, Super Collider. I will probably it'll probably be some more live processing with voice. I had some cheesy, not cheesy. They they just weren't that good sound that good grade of sounds um, with my FM with live processing. But what I had noticed was you heard my voice while producing the FM. I need to find a way where my, my voice is actually mixed down where you don't hear my voice at all. And then you just hear the input and FM. So if I actually find that solution, then I'll definitely show it as a super collider demo. Um, oh man, no worry, Eric. What's, you, no one hijacks the, the chat with really good discussion. And I, again, I, I'm pretty forward with my opinions when it comes to music, so I hope you weren't put off by that. Um, I'm definitely like a lot more polite when it comes to being a guest on Soundtracks with Birdman. <laughs> but um, yeah, I can be a little opinionated when it comes to that. But anyway, yeah, look out for probably Friday. I think Fridays are going to be the days that I post the videos either um, on Super Clatter or original music. And I think I think that's it. Of course, be on the lookout for a book study for, um, with... I think it's Professor Geek this week for the book study with uh, Star Wars. I think wrapping up Star Wars, the story, um, Allegiance with Big Al and, and all that. But again, it depends on scheduling and all that. Just be on the lookout for a Tuesday book study, 930. We did have it with Catholic Bible Geek last week. So I think it is uh, Professor, Geek, Professor Geek this week. And then also, of course, you know, just the great commentary of soundtracks with Eric Woods as uh on his channel as well um and uh soundtracks with birdman i'm glad daniel had a really good concert this evening and that's wonderful but i think that's it for me um just uh always oh oh yeah should i announce this watching mannequin saturday 10 p.m with big al presents with special guest professor geek special guest professor geek and um, yeah, that, that should be interesting. So I'm glad, I'm so glad you pointed that out, Al. So um, yes, that is this Saturday as well. So until I see everyone, you guys keep producing and preserving and just loving the art and music you love. And I will catch you later. Thanks again.